in Jude one fourteen says it was also about these men that Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints. The saints are coming, ladies and gentlemen. The day is coming when the saints will come. And that day we will look up and we will see the Lord coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I can assure you that day is coming. Guys, today we have a special guest. I'm really excited. Um, uh, Kijani Amari from Sackcloth and Ashes is here. Um, Kijani, why don't you give a shout out to everybody and say hello? Hey, God bless everybody. Thank you for um, for listening. Praise God. Hey, uh, guys, why don't we start with the prayer and let's just crack into it. We got so much to talk about tonight, you guys. There's so much just, there's so much hanging in the balance right now. There's so many souls. There's, there's so much stuff right now that's piling up around the world. There's, there's so many people that need the Lord. There's so many people that need Jesus Christ. In this last hour, my, my heart is burdened. My heart is I'm struggling not to burst into tears right now because I feel the weight for these people that don't know. They don't know the Lord yet. And if they don't know the Lord before this day gets here, their their time is is almost out. So let's pray together as a collective body. God has given us the spirit that we walk directly before the throne of grace. We are we are received in his presence immediately. He says we can boldly approach the throne of grace, being assured of a glad welcome. So let's all remember that as we collectively pray to our Father in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. We come before you in all humility. And Father, we would pray for the souls of the lost right now. And by praying in the name of Jesus Christ that this program tonight, that these words are fall on hearts that are ready they're ready to be heard and ready to be saved and ready to give their lives to Jesus Christ and that these hearts are ready to understand that a day of calamity is coming quickly and that there's an urgency and it's on Kajani's heart, it's on my heart that the desperateness of the message at this late hour to turn to Jesus Christ with your whole heart. If you are saved and you're not walking with the Lord, now is the time to turn with your whole heart because of the days that are directly in front of us. Father, please let these words fall on receptive hearts and receptive ears tonight. In the name of your son, amen. Kajani, welcome to the show, brother. I'm so glad to have you here, man. I can't tell you. I'm glad to be here, man. Thank you so much for inviting me. Praise God. Okay, well, listen, a lot of everybody that, you know, the tunes in here, they know they know a lot about me, and a lot, some of them know a lot about you um, from watching your vids. But uh, why don't you give everybody just a quick background on, you know, like what happened? You got saved. God called you to ministry. You decided to go out and hit the YouTube circuit. Just give us a quick rundown on what's up. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, basically, uh, my, my story begins, I guess, kind of in, in two different places. Um, and then I, I was brought kind of into into the whole ministry. Um, it, I kind of backed into it. I, I should say, basically, um, what what really opened my eyes and brought me into um, that brought me to the Lord was an experience that I had um, as a young man. I was um, invited to join um, the Masonic Order. Wow! Matter, yeah, my, <laughs> yeah, my father was a Mason. Uh-huh. Um and uh, but I wasn't invited by him. I was actually invited by uh, a coworker of mine. Um, I was uh, 21 years old, and he brought me into the um, you know, in, into the uh, lodge, and I was given my first degree. Um, you know, no problem. Went through the whole ritual. The second degree, maybe a month later, and then my third degree. But the thing is, when I when I received my third degree. Um, th- th- this guy who was a, actually a, a friend of mine, he looked at me. He was um, what they call the worshipful master of the lodge. He's a 33rd degree mason. He looked at me and he says, um, you know, now that you have your third degree, um, and he showed me this book. There was a red book. Mm-hmm. And he said, 
when you start reading this book, there's some things in here that are going to blow your mind. He said, because of the things that are in here, people say that we worship Satan. And so, you know, that right there sent bells and whistles off in my head because I'm like, what? I that was a wake-up call. I don't believe it because... Yeah. Well, I was under I was under the impression that you know this was a Christian organization. Um, I was raised in a house where um, even though my parents didn't take us to church, they sent me to church with um, you know my aunt and uh, you know the rest of my siblings. We would go to church sure. with my aunt. So, so um, you know Jesus was was a part of my life from a young age. Although I wasn't um, you know living for Jesus or serving Him at that time, but I, I still you know. Uh, you know, I guess kind of like people um, that that aren't, that haven't given their lives over to God yet, you know, that are still sure. in the world, you know, they still they still acknowledge um, Christ. So I was in that, you know, mode at the time. But when he said mm-hmm. that, I was like, wait a minute, hold on. And so that really started, <laughs> that started me to, um, you know, doing a lot of research and reading and, um, you know, more things started um, to be uncovered for me. Right. Um, the second thing, um, that really, really did it for me is uh, I was involved in the, in the music industry. Um, obviously, that's that's kind of where um, Satanism and hip hop was born from. Mm-hmm. Because I was part of the the music industry, and right. I worked with you know some some pretty big name artists. I, w- I won't name them right here, right now, but mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll I'll save that for you know a later time. Right. Um, but but in that um, you know, I was in the studio uh, one night with, like I said, a, a couple big name artists there, mm-hmm. and I was I was told, um, well, you should read this book, um, and the book was called Forty Eight Laws of Power, and um, they said, well, we're not going to get it for you. You should go out and get it, but um, this is required reading. You know, if you're going to be a part of, you know, what we're doing here, and um, you know, you need to have this. Wow. You know, this is how this is how you operate. So I went out and I got the book. And so I'm reading you know, Forty Eight Laws of Power and as I'm reading this thing, I'm I'm saying to myself <laughs> this, <laughs> looks like, this looks like the book from the Messiah Quad. John. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I I couldn't help myself, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, but you're absolutely right. So you know, always the, the things that are in this this um book, you know, I lose my soul. Yeah. Um. And so the thing that that really really struck me is that while I'm sitting there in in the um in the studio in the kind of lounge area, I'm on the couch. Um, one of the other um a producer walked in. And um, he said to me, he said, what, what are you reading? And I showed him the book. And he looked at me. He said, um, just don't forget your Bible. And he walked out. And wow. that, really, that really resonated with me. Now, wow. this guy, he, he's a producer. He's a, he's a big-time um, producer, but he's in the background. You know, uh, Most people don't know his name unless you're actually in, you know, the industry or whatever. He right. writes songs and things like that. And so I followed him upstairs and we we started talking and, and you know, he was he he kinda opened my eyes to a lot of things. He and one of the things he said to me, he didn't um expound on it, but he did say to me, he says, um, you ever notice how um people that have um success, whether it's Celebrities, uh, you know, people in the music industry, people, people, you know, football players, anything like that. People that have a large amount of success, they usually have some type of tragedy or death in their family, right? He left it open ended. So, you know, as if to say, just think about this. I want you to think. Now, I've already told you about reading that book and. The book that you should be focusing on, and now I, I gave you another nugget. You, you know what I mean? So it, it was almost right. Like, <laughs> right. It was almost sent by God to kind of to guide me. In yeah. The way that I need to to you balance know? you there. 
That's exactly. that's fascinating. That's really interesting. So you, you know, I myself was in the music industry also, and uh, I find it fascinating because, uh, yeah, it's to to really really make it. It's it's basically selling your soul for the for the most part. Most people don't don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. Um, wow. So that's that's where you were. That's so you started off like. You know, uh, with your eyes being open through uh, the Masonic Lodge and and through the music industry, and when did you when did you dive into uh, you know this public ministry? When did you start feeling the need to open people's eyes doing these types of videos? Well, what happened was that was what I just told you was kind of the um, the thing that that really like opened my eyes to see okay. Either I can follow this, this that, and try to go after worldly riches, or I can follow Christ and get eternal riches. And at that time, I, I made the decision. I, I walked away from the music industry, and um, I actually I started doing things. Um, uh, I guess you could say um, on my own, independently, because I had been signed at one time. Um, so I started mm-hmm. doing independent music, and the focus of the music um, changed. So it went from worldly things, uh, not so much um, Christian at that time, but it, it was it was almost like an an awakening was happening with me. You know, right. so the more the study, it was more along the lines of Illuminati, um, you know, masonry, those things, and breaking right. down those. And and as I dug deeper. Um, the Holy Spirit just started changing me, and and yeah. um, I ended up where I where I am right now. You, you know what I mean? So it was yeah. it was a long journey for me. You know? Uh, absolutely, yeah. It's I, I totally understand. The Lord, myself, he's he. Uh, I was in the music industry also, and back in the eighties, and and um, we were actually out out selling Guns and Roses and Motley Crue in Europe. Uh, we had the third import album in Europe, and but the Lord slammed the door in my face. <laughs> he, he knew, but he knew I would have, he knew I would have taken the bait. <laughs> so he, he he shut it down for me. But um, it's interesting because as I watch your videos and as I watch what you're uh, bringing forth from the public, everything you're. Everything you've been showing the public through uh, your videos, I noticed. I've been running a parallel. I just, I haven't made much mention of it, but uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about a very controversial subject. And if you don't want to talk about it, that's okay. But if you're okay with it, um, I'll just, I'm going to throw myself out right now to the wolves, okay? But okay. everybody that knows me knows that I did a series called the Just a Messenger series. Uh, that was filmed in the summer of 2008, and uh, we posted that series. And during that series, I, w- I broke down a hieroglyph and the U.S. currency. I-, I had a prophetic utterance. And also in that prophetic utterance, uh, the words were, the, uh, Behold the man of peace, Barack Hussein Obama, shall come forth from the sea, and with words of peace he will bring chaos and destruction and then at that time, the, the following words were, Behold, the fig tree puts forth its leaves, and suddenly the time is upon you. The travail begins. Um, I, I myself, in 2008, came out publicly and said, The Lord had revealed to me that the up-and-coming man of peace and the son of perdition would be Barack Hussein Obama. Um, what are you, you have any thoughts on that yourself? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. And, um, obviously, if, if anybody's been watching my videos, as a matter of fact, I get a lot of complaints. Sometimes, well, no, I won't say a lot of complaints. <laughs> you won't make I, a I get complaints about, you know, <laughs> yeah. and Obama's the Antichrist. Obama's not the Antichrist. Obama, you know, I get a lot of that. But um, mm-hmm. honestly, um, the Lord put it in my spirit actually before the elections of, yeah, um, of 2008 that this was the man of sin. And right. um, I remember me and my wife, um, oh, as a matter of fact, I had been saying months before the election that he's going to win hands down. There's there's not a doubt in my mind that he's going to win. Right. And then, um, after 
you know, the election, I remember watching the um, inauguration and, and just seeing, you know, him being placed in that position, and, and I was saying, okay, and now it begins. You know, so. Right, that's interesting. You said now it begins then, because that's 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 very key. That's that's kind of one thing I'm looking for, because like I said, I've I've noticed a, a very unique parallel between some of the things that you brought forward and and some of the things that I brought forward and the timing of it. Um, so, in your opinion, in your opinion right now, if Barack won the presidency back when he did, you know. And he was inaugurated in 2009. Um, it's my opinion from the prophetic utterance that the Lord gave me. And by virtue of the fact that he did win the Nobel Peace Prize, which was part of the prophetic utterance the Lord gave me that uh, the man of peace, Barack Hussein Obama, would come forth from the sea. And with words of peace, he'll bring chaos and destruction. It was, in my opinion, and from what the Lord showed me, that would put us midway through the tribulation, right at the door of the wrath beginning. And what's your opinion on that? Do you it, you know, that that's the thing that kinda um you know, I, I can't put my finger on it. Okay. I, I know I know um that that we are definitely in the last times. Mm -hmm. Um I believe the wrath is coming. Um but I, I can't I can't actually say exactly where we are. And I'm, sure. I'm just being honest. no, that's okay. That's uh, man, I, that's 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 what I'm always looking for is just honesty. But let's talk about your latest video because yeah, uh, I would just the supernatural thing that happened that just absolutely destroyed my mind was I was doing a show just like this. You know, I was doing a show on I think it was a Friday night, and uh, I was talking about. The U.S. currency, and you had an opportunity to watch the video, uh, Destruction of America. And it, on that video, you know, um, you'll see that the old $20 bill has the bombings of the federal building on it, and it matches up perfectly. And it even now, I laid it right on top of the floors. It's an identical match, and then the Twin Towers, and then the, the Pentagon. But there's bombings on there that that are on the U.S. currency that haven't happened yet, which... On the ten dollar bill there's a there's a tidal wave that's covering a seven story building and there's also a nuclear missile coming out of the water on the ten dollar bill and then there's um there's a fifty dollar bill but we'll talk about that in a minute but so anyway, I was talking about the the missile and then yeah, you know, I went to bed that night and you know I told you I woke up and I there was a spongebob on that had a nuclear missile coming out of the water and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. I thought, I thought, you got to be kidding me. And I got up and I prayed, you know, and that's what I do. I get up and I pray and I start seeking the Lord and asking him. And then, oddly enough, after the Lord confirmed me, absolutely, it's a missile and it's coming to the United States and get ready. Um, then, oddly enough, uh, your video was the very next thing I saw the next day. I think, uh, right. so. Oh, oh, yeah, it was, uh, never mind, it was right after the show, <laughs> I forgot, Clay, though, no, it was after the show, yeah, that's when my jaw hit the ground, I was like, uh, what, and so, you, so, why don't you, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what happened with, uh, with the dream, and, and what was, what was the story with the, the missile and all that? Yeah, definitely, um, I was, that, that, that same night, um, you know, I spent the regular night, you know, here on the computer back and forth on YouTube and doing, you know, my normal thing. Um, I don't know, maybe I, I got into bed maybe about 11 o'clock that night. Um, and I slept well. Um, about, I, I don't know, uh, I, I guess around, it was right before, right before dawn, um, I got, I had this dream and, the first thing I saw, there was just these bright stars, and um, I heard a voice say to me that you have to look into the constellations. And right. when I looked where the voice was directing me, I saw, um, you know, the United States. Clear as day, I saw a missile, and I saw the word Columbia. And and then I saw uh, these missiles start coming up out of out of the water, but off of the east coast of um, the Atlantic. You know, uh, yeah. the, the space, sure. in, in, in the ocean. Um, 
at that at, at that time the missiles uh, landed and they they just just totally destroyed um you know the area where they landed at um right. and the dream switched to a different uh, kind of different scene and I saw nothing but chaos um, riots in the street um, martial law um, right Terry was taking away guns and 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 uh, ushering people to um, you know FEMA camp stuff like that. Right. Um, and then I saw uh, a man, a, a dark skinned man, brown skinned man, but I, I couldn't see his face. Um, and he was riding a horse, and a crown appeared on his head. And behind mm-hmm. him um, were other horses. And when the crown appeared on his head he started riding even more furiously, you know, wow. as, it, as it, it was, um, you know, like, like with anger. Um, right. And, and that's when I woke up, um, b- before, actually before I woke, woke up, there was so much going on in the dream. It, it kind of felt like I was sitting on the, um, computer watch, watching a video. So I'm sitting there and I'm trying to download, um, my dream, you know, so I'm in the dream and it's almost like I'm sitting on a computer now and I'm trying to download it, but it won't download. And right. then that's when I wake up. Um, as soon as I woke up, I knew um, this wasn't just an ordinary dream. So I I, I went right away um, to the room where I pray and I prayed and I got on my hands and, and my knees and I asked God, um, please, um, you know, let me know, give me a confirmation that this is, you know, from you and not from my own mind. And um, at that time, I, I received a message um, from God that, that was confirming um, everything that I that I uh, had dreamed. And mm-hmm. that's the message that you hear on the back of that video. Right. And then after that, after I put up the video, um, maybe, I don't know how long it was afterwards, but I saw a, um, a message from Clay saying, this is the um, the biggest confirmation that I've ever seen. You know, and he left, he just left that comment on, on my video. And, so, yeah. and then I, and I checked my um, personal message and he was telling me that, that this was confirming what you, what you guys were talking about on the radio show, uh, which I didn't listen to. Um, right. And you had no, see, that's what's so, that, that's what's really fascinating is obviously you had no clue that I had just done this radio show talking about no. this exact subject. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had no idea. Um, and the, the mist was coming out of the water for me. That was, that was a first. I, I had never, um, you know, dreamed anything like that before. I didn't, I wasn't watching anything on TV, had, you know, having to do with nuclear missiles, nothing like that. So, this came out of the blue to me, but it was so clear and so detailed um, that I knew that it, it was from um, the Lord. Right. You had told me, yeah, when we talked on the phone, you know, the other day, you were telling me um, about uh, you had previously once in your life had another dream that had the same quality, and it, the quality of the dream was like this dream. And can you kind of tell everybody about that dream and what happened and what the results were? I want to I want to be able to use that Kajani as a comparison to this dream and say, hey, you know what? Uh, Kajani has had a dream like this before, and when he had this dream, this is what happened. And now he's having another one, and so it might be very clear indication that it's the same as the one in the past. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. All right. Um, well, um, for those that are um, subscribers to my channel, um, you can go to to my channel, and um, if you look in the uh, uh, in the playlist, I have a playlist for Sackcloth and Ashes, um, 2011. Um, mm-hmm. For all all the, all the Sackcloth and Ashes that I made in 2011, if you go there, you'll see the first four videos. They're called. Um, Sackcloth and Ashes, Acts 217, Dreams and Floods of Biblical Proportion. Um, and so what those four um, videos are, um, basically, I had a dream on um, December 31st, 2010, um, New Year's Eve. Okay. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna put a link to those in the chat room for anyone that's. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Kajani. Hey, anyone that's interested, we're gonna go ahead and put a link to those in the chat room so you can go check them out. Okay, keep going, Kajani. Okay, no problem. 
So yeah. basically, that night, um, New Year's Eve, um, 2010, going into 2011, I had a dream, um, and basically, I was I was uh, asleep, dead asleep, and um, I heard a voice, um, almost like a television was on, but there was there were no um, TVs on in my house um, mm-hmm. at that time. And I heard the voice. The voice said to me that there will be um, mul- um, floods in multiple coastal cities um, mm-hmm. between January 4th to January 6th. And so um, when I woke up that morning, you know, I, I told my wife about the dream that I had. And um, we kind of, you know, said, okay, well, if if this is true, then... Let's wait to see January 4th comes around and if, if there's any confirmation. So I went ahead and took her to work that morning. Um, this is early in the morning, like maybe 7, 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, by 11 o'clock, my wife called me at home and she says, hey, you need to um, get to a computer or, <laughs> or um, you know, turn on the news or something because there is a flood happening now. Um and so I turn on the TV, and I, I see that they're talking about the flood that was going on in um, Queensland, Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm saying, wow, this, you know, really weird. I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I know that it's pretty freaky. What's up? <laughs> it's like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> you know, and this, this is the first time that anything like that had ever happened to me, and so I had never experienced anything like right. that. So, this was totally new to me. So now I'm kind of freaked out. Uh, I said, okay, so this here's what I'm going to do. I'll make a video about it, and we'll wait and see what happens, you know, on the 4th and between the 4th and the 6th. So, um, like I said, the four videos that you see on Sackcloth the National 2011, the first four videos, mm-hmm. it's just a, a, I documented exactly what happened. And during that time, there was a flood in uh, the Philippines, let me see. Let me hold on. Pull it up here. So yeah, it's a real, it's a real shocker when you hear from the Lord, and then then all of a sudden you uh-huh. actually see it happening, isn't it? That it it, it really freaked me out. So yeah. on January fourth in Manila, the the Philippines in Manila, there was a flood. January fifth, the flooding in Australia, um, Queensland spread to forty one um, different cities. January fifth. And six, Indonesia had a flood. Um, wow. January six, um, Brazil in um, Espiritu Santo, which means oh yeah, oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> there. So I'm like, oh come on now, this is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, uh, I'm laughing because I know the contorted look on on my face when when I've seen stuff like that happen. It's like whoa. And uh, I can just imagine, uh... yeah. Yeah, it's, it's at that point where you know that um, this is a supernatural occurrence, and you know that um, this is not, you know, from your own mind, and it's it's right. it's, it's awesome, and it's it's a game changer, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, so 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 you got you experience in here. For you folks listening, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna draw an inference. I'm gonna make a point with this. Having experienced this before, because you know there was he had a dream. Um, he came forward with the dream, and and then sure enough, the dream materialized into something actually happening that was of the dream. Now. That's a very, very heavy duty thing for someone to experience, and I know because I've experienced it. When Obama won the won the Nobel Peace Prize and they started calling him the Man of Peace, I freaked out. I mean, I I freaked because of the words of the prophetic utterance, the Man of Peace, and they they were calling him the Man of Peace, Barack Hussein Obama. Now, here's where I'm going with this: because you have experienced this before in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual world, you know what it feels like, you know what it looks like, and you know what kind of the spiritual kind of feeling is when it's happening. Therefore, let's talk about this latest dream you had about the the missile thing. Uh 
Is it, in your opinion, do you feel like while you're standing there, if you were standing in front of the whole world, Kajani, what would you say, guys, I'm telling you, this is the same as that other dream. I believe it with all my heart that this is about to happen, and it's about to happen any time. Um, what would be your, you know, how would you approach this to talk to the world about this latest dream you had? Oh, absolutely, 110%, I would say, this is exactly the feeling that I had before when I had that dream about the floods and it came to pass. Right. And um, I know that this will happen. Um, the thing, the scary thing is, is that um, during the dream with the floods, he gave me a date. You know, I was given a date, January uh, 4th through the 6th. Right. Um, but this time there was no, no date given. So right. that's, you know, to me, it can happen at any time, at right. any time, you know. Right. So, um, I, I because of that, I feel the urgency mm, to get yeah. that, and that's that's why I'm here on your radio, um, you know, station tonight. Because anybody that knows or uh, has been following uh, me on my channel, I, I don't do you know radio interviews. Right, interviews right. Like Understood. You know, but because of that, um, because of this this dream that I had, I feel the urgency to get this word out. We need to get as many people saved as possible because um, as well as this dream, um, I received a message. Well, well, I receive messages from Christ all the, all the time, you know. So anybody yeah. that, that sees my um, the love letters from, from Yahweh or listens to, to my videos, they know that. Right. But I also received a, a message within the same time frame that's saying that um, his mercy is going to be taken away and what's going to be left is merciless judgment. But the thing is, is that Christ doesn't want any man to perish. He doesn't want that. Um, so it's our job to save as many people as possible by bringing them to Christ, you know, and, and uh, Amen. show the light of, of, of the gospel. And now is, is, is crunch time. We're in the final um, second, you know, Final and I see. I believe that wholeheartedly. Lee. I'm gonna now, guys. Now I want to also kind of add to this because I want. I want to. I want to take what Kajani's told you and his experience. And I mean, this is a real thing, folks. This is a real thing. This is what real Christianity is. Um, you know, God cans out spiritual gifts. It's 1 Corinthians 12. Go read your Bible, and the gift of prophecy is alive and well, and the gift of knowledge and the gift of discernment, the gift of uh, wisdom, these gifts are alive and well. Um, these things, once once you've been, um, let's say, party to it happening in your own life, you know what it is. It's kind of like, uh, you know, having experienced laying on of hands before and seeing someone that was very ill, um, get well, you know what it is once you've seen it. Um, it's the same way for this. Um, I myself have had experiences that are so mind-blowing and supernatural that, you know, God orchestrates even the timing of it, and that's where I'm going with this. The timing of Kajani's particular uh, dream and his testimony right now is imperative that people understand there is an urgency, and I'm going to prove it to you, and I'm going to I'm going to give Clay the headset here in a minute too, because through the mouth of two or three witnesses, uh, it can, a word can be established, and I want to establish this as a word because I want to give my testimony now alongside Kajani, and then I'm going to bring Clay on, and I'm going to let Clay give a testimony also because we are here to speak only the truth and only in the circumstances and then you as a christian you must discern and you must decide yourself and you must take this before the lord and if you find this to be true it becomes also your responsibility as a watchman to then because once it's found a place in your heart is truth then you become responsible Responsible to warn others. So what I want to do now is I want to say, look, Kajani had this experience. He had this dream, and it was very much like a dream he had years ago. 
proved to be true. Now he's had another one. This one involves missiles. It involves the destruction of the United States. Okay, now I'm going to talk about this other guy named Jonathan Clack. This guy, he had a dream, he he had a, a radio program where he was talking about the U.S. currency and the images that are hidden on the U.S. currency that were a revelation gift from the Lord as well as a prophetic gift. Here are the words that describe the events on the $10 bill. Behold, the hand of the oppressor has been lifted against you, and out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem will cover the city by the sea, and great shall be the destruction. Okay, now, those words are words that describe the event of the images on the $10 bill. Okay, there is a nuclear missile coming out of the water on the $10 bill. There's also a tidal wave. Um, somehow they all fit together, but here's the point. They're all pointed at the United States because all the other images that were on the currency before, meaning the federal building, that those bombings happened. And they're on the old twenty dollar bill, there's an image of the federal building. That bombing happened. On the new twenty dollar bill, there's an image of the Twin Towers. That bombing happened. On the new twenty dollar bill, there's an image of the Pentagon. That bombing happened. Now, on the new ten dollar bill, there's an image of an offshore nuclear attack on this country. Okay, now I'm going to put my testimony alongside Kajani, and then I'm going to tell you, during a time of prayer, after the revelation of this information, the Lord told me, and I spoke it out loud in front of Clay, and this is where Clay will give his testimony. This is what the Lord said, Jonathan, you will see many other servants I have given this same vision to many others around the world, and you will see them soon and very quickly. They will come in, and you will be made aware of it. That, now, that is what was told to me through the Spirit, and I mean, I said those words out loud, right in front of Clay, right during a prayer time. Now, here's the thing. The night, you know, you guys have already seen, I already put out the video, you know, the SpongeBob, you know, I know it's just SpongeBob, SpongeBob. It, it doesn't make a difference whether or not it was SpongeBob or whether or not it was, uh, you know, James Bond. It doesn't matter. The point is, I woke up at some hour of the morning after a radio show talking about a nuclear attack on this country that the Lord had impressed upon me was coming. And that night I was awakened and I saw a nuclear missile that was on my screen coming out of the water. It just so happened it was SpongeBob. It doesn't matter, like I said, whether or not it's SpongeBob or, you know, whether or not it was James Bond. Then I went to sleep and I woke up again. And on that same TV screen was an image of the Hoover Dam breaking. Guys, that's the image on the $50 bill that's also part of the same prophetic utterance the Lord gave me. Here are the words that match that imagery on the bill. Here they are. And behold, the Great Wall which holds back the abundance of the rivers, shall burst forth, bringing the hand of the oppressor against you. For I have seen it, says the Lord. Okay. Now, we're going to take that part of the utterance, the, the dam breaking and the offshore nuclear attack, and we're going to take those, and then we put them together, and they happen all within 24 hours of each other. Those things were confirmed through waking up and seeing them you know, from a dead sleep and seeing these things within 24 hours. Then Kajani, his video comes to me next. And I just, when my jaw was hanging open, I was going, you got to be kidding. Now I'm going to put Clay on and I'm going to let Clay give a little testimony to what happened. And then, and you know, and then fill you in because I want you guys to understand it's not just Johnny. It's not just Jonathan Clack. It's a slew of other people. And the reason I want to do this is I want to establish it as this has happened through many other witnesses. And then we're going to talk about the implications and what, you know, those people that, that are hearing this need to and should do about it. Okay, I'm going to hand the headset over to Clay. Here you go, guys. I'll be back. Hey, you, Johnny. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, so, yeah, what Johnny was asking me to testify to, let me untangle the cord here. He he handed me a 
a little bouncing Betty action here. All right, good. Um, Kajani, yeah, uh, right after – are you still there, by the way? <laughs> Did I lose you? I think you might have got disconnected. Kajani, if you can hear, call back in because I can't hear you. Um, I hope everyone can still hear me. You guys can still hear me, right? Okay, they can hear me. We lost Kajani, but he'll call back in. I know his zip code. Let's see. Um, did we lose your brother? We got you? Hey, I'm here. Okay, there we go. Um, I, I guess he put you on hold, or did we get disconnected? No, we got disconnected. Okay, good. Okay. I mean, not good, but it's good we got you back. <laughs> but, yeah. okay, well, what Johnny was just saying, he was asking me to, to give my little side of the story, you know, just to be a witness to this so that it's not something Johnny's making up. And by the way, hi to Pastor JC in the chat room and hi to everyone else. Um, he's on the JustinTV.chat, so praise God for you, brother. Your video came in at another one of those supernatural timings. You had those two videos, and from what I understand, you hadn't seen um, Kajani's video or Jonathan's video about the nukes, and so that just tells me the Holy Spirit is just confirming this just even more. But, brother, yeah, your video posted during the show we were talking about his dream. So he had had that dream – or I mean that experience with SpongeBob. He had had that SpongeBob experience – the night before, he texted me, you know, like, oh, yeah, the missile's on the 10. I was like, that's kind of cool. Then he gets the SpongeBob thing. We're talking about it on the radio. As soon as the show ends, we get text messages and messages all over the place. People are like, oh, watch Sackcloth and Ashes, Sackcloth and Ashes. We're like, what? And then I'm, I'm out for a walk. I walk around the neighborhood, and I pray and just stretch my legs. And John calls me. He's like, you're not going to believe the missile footage that's on the Sackcloth's uh, video. I was like, what? He's like, it's the exact same missile. I was like, oh, my gosh. It was that black and white missile. And, oh, God. It was just that's incredible. Amazing. Praise incredible. God. Yes, yes. Those things just don't happen by chance, man. It's, it's, that's not, no. not coincidence. No, not at all. Did you get a chance to watch the, it all the way to the end, and you got to see Henry Groover and Dimitri Dudeman and all all those testimonies? Yes, the- yes. I, I thought that was so awesome, man. I mean, to see uh, so many um, servants of the Most High God um, speaking uh, about the messages that they've received um, from God, um, it, it's just an awesome thing, man. And and to have those messages all overlap each other. Around happening around the same time with the same message. That I mean, how can you deny that? It's uh, you, it's impossible to. And and when you do, then that's you're gonna have to take account for that denial of that evidence. You know, because every word, every thought is is all recorded in the in the book of life. And so anyone, that, if anyone's looking at this show and you're not a believer in Jesus Christ and and you're seeing all these dreams and visions flood in, just understand that that's the Lord trying to get your attention because he always says what he's going to do before he does it, especially when it's destruction. And most of the time in the past, he would bring about droughts, even terrible droughts, just to get people's attention before the fire comes down. And the fire's coming down. So if, if you're watching this video and listening on Justin TV and you you don't, you don't know Jesus Christ, just please call in and, and then we'll chat and we'll get your, your soul in the right place because Hebrews 9.27 is very clear that men is appointed to die once and then the judgment comes there. So that's it's serious. This is a serious message, and and I know we get excited about all these confirmations because it's it's very surreal to have this stuff happen in real time. But whenever the confirmations keep coming in, then it just sets even hard, harder on my heart that it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. You know, I'm sure you feel that too, brother. Yes, yes, definitely. I, I mean, it it really hurts my heart because you know when you when you actually sit and think about it. Um, the destruction that's that's coming upon America, and not just upon America, but upon the entire world mm. um, during the tribulation period. Um, there's no one that you could um, dislike that much to want them to have to go through that. Right. You know? So um, it's an urgent message. I, I, I mean that if you don't know Christ, you need to. You need to really seek Him out, seek His face. You know, get on your hands and knees and, and ask Him to be the, the Lord and Master of your life, to be your Savior. Call upon the name of the, of the Lord. Uh, um, because time is time is definitely running out, you know. Hey, uh, it's well put, brother. I'm, okay, I'm going to run to the restroom. I think Jonathan wants to hop back on with you. But it was a pleasure to talk, brother. I'm sure we'll talk soon. Always. Always. Bye, brother. Hey, Amen. Um, now, um, guys, I want to read. Everybody listen to me, please, because let me... 
Let me tell you what's required of not just Kajani and not just me, but what's required of you. And I want you to understand, if if a message finds a place in your heart and if God reveals it to you, let me tell you what's required of you. Open your Bibles to Ezekiel 33. Okay. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not the warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. Thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word in my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Okay. Here's the here go ahead, Johnny. Oh yeah, I just want to follow that up with, with this scripture, Matthew twenty four, starting at verse forty two. Mm-hmm. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief was done, he would have watched would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods, but, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, delay his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, that sounds bad. <laughs> that sounds really really bad. So what I would like to say, you know, on behalf of any servant, is if you have a dream, like Kajani had a dream, if you get up from bed and you pray and you say, Lord, was that dream from you or was that my own mind making it up? And you hear from the Lord, no, that was from me. Then you have a requirement to make that known And the point of making it known is so that the person that is in sin has an opportunity to turn from his sin before the sword comes. Why do you think we're putting ourselves out there, folks? I'll be honest. I don't particularly enjoy us, you know, making videos about Barack Obama being the son of perdition. However, if the Lord conveys information to a watchman and you either believe that the Lord gave it to you or not. Now, you must act on faith also. So here's the thing. What happened to me is very different than what happened to Kajani, but we both had the similar message. And what is the message? The message is repent. Turn from your sins Be reconciled to God because you don't know that day or the hour on which it and when the Lord's going to return. But 
we have guaranteed calamity at some point coming. We can rest assured in that. We know that. Um, I want to point out just a little thing about Israel and Iran right now. Kajani, do you keep up with current events? <laughs> you, know what's good. you know what's going on there, right? Yes, yes, definitely. So what, what do you think about that and how all that might play into this? Um, well, I was just watching uh, a couple videos that were, were put up by uh, Adrenaline Junkie. Um, yeah. He had a lot of videos on, you know, with the news, with, with great um, information. And the last couple that I saw, um, they were talking about Israel's thinking about attacking Iran before the November election. Um, right. I, I I can definitely see that. Um, Happening. So, well, did um, you know? Did you know that that Israel's liaison um, came out and said, "Quote: This is not a reality TV show. This is for America and the rest of the world." Yeah. I, I'm going to use that where he said, "This is not a reality TV show where the loser has to leave the island." He said, yeah, "This is re- this is real life, and if the oh, United yeah. States does not act." In a military fashion, before September 26th, then we will have to act, and we have the capability. Guys, that's a line in the sand. So I find it very auspicious and conspicuous at the same time that these things are going on, that Kajani is having a dream about what he's having a dream about, that I'm waking up seeing missiles coming out of the water. And oddly enough, it was actually the identical, you know, it's, I, I find this this is one of those little God things. But the missile you used in your video is the uh, identical missile that's in the SpongeBob video. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was just uh, my jaw hit the ground. I was I was looking for a spatula to get my jaw off the table. I was just going, "You got to be kidding me!" So, but but so I Clay I got on, and I'm sure Clay testified to the reality that after your video, it was one after another after another after another. I was going, "What the heck?" But it is exactly what the Lord said in prayer. That's yes, exactly yes. what he said. I heard him say it. He said, I've shown this to other servants around the world, and mm-hmm. you will see it. And I went, oh, okay. And sure enough, man, it was right out of the gate. So, oh, man, it was awesome. I'm sorry. To, uh, no, you're okay. Keep, no, keep um, going. The, um, the pastor from the Philippines, I can't think of his name right now. Papa? But he mentioned uh, no, not him. His his video was was yeah, was Pastor awesome. JC, so, Pastor JC. Yes, yes, and um, and he was talking about the horses that he saw, and um, Popos did as well. So those things, it, you know, when I heard it, it was like, oh my god, oh my god, you know, it, it's it's so surreal. It's I don't want to say unbelievable, but it it yeah, almost sure. you know yeah. is. I know it is. It's, it's bro, you're preaching to the choir director, bro. I know it's like I, I literally I tell Clay all the time. Clay's in right here. I go, Clay, that 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 just happened, right? That's that's that really happened, right? I'm not making this up, am I? <laughs> I just because so many uh, supernatural, weird uh, things happen so frequently around here now. That I'm just going like I, I have to confirm it with Clay sometimes that it really happened. Hey right, guys, listen, I, I, as crazy as this is, I'm not kidding. Today, you know, today uh, I had to come from dropping my kid off at school, and I had to come back home and lay down for a little while. Guys, I, I that's not something I do. I get up in the morning and I go all day. That's just the way I've always been. I came back and I lay down for a little while. I'm not kidding. I sat up. In my bed, and their SpongeBob was on. I, I flicked the. My kids watch SpongeBob, okay? And I flicked on. I clicked on the video, and I'm not kidding. A whole different video was in the DVD player, and what came on, and I'm not kidding, was fire coming out of the sky, and and the 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 members 
a bikini bottom, the, the fish in bikini bottom, standing in front of the government of bikini bottom, saying, uh, the end is near. They, and they were, I'm not kidding, they're going, the end is near. I thought I was in like a dream. I was like, this is not real. I mean, this, this is surreal. You cannot see these things one after another. And 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 kind of keep it all together. So I got up and I told Clay, I was like, dude, I gotta show this to you because I can't even process it. <laughs> but but uh, here we go again. Anyway, go ahead, Kajani. One thing I, I want to add to, um, for those that um, have a hard time believing, because you saw this um, in SpongeBob, I want I want you guys to to really take note. Um, that that these cartoons and, and and the whole media is 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 replete with with Illuminati, um, satanic symbolism. There's another um completely uh, completely uh, replete. Falls. Yeah, absolutely called Gravity Falls, and there's so much. Oh gosh, Gravity, Gravity Falls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. I'm just trying to throw that in there as an aside. So you know, for those that. Have a have a hard time believing it because you're saying you know this was SpongeBob, but understand that these these things are put into these shows. Um, I mean, I have a, a young daughter; she watches um you know so Disney Channel is on you know a lot in the house, and I use that to show her. Do you see this? Do you see that symbolism? As a matter of right. fact, she points out to me now. That's you know exactly, I mean? that's exactly what I do to my kids. I use those TV, I use those programs to show my kids what is hidden right in front of their face. And now my kids show it to me. Uh, that's, that's exactly right. That's exa- I use it as a training tool. Yeah, <laughs> that's <absolutely>. amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, if you had to speak to the whole world right now, what would you want to tell everybody in the world? If you had, if you if you had the whole world's attention, what would you tell them right now? Uh, Christ died for your sins. That God gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. This is the greatest story and the greatest gift ever given to man. And this is something that each and every person needs to take time and, and uh contemplate what this means, what Christ actually gave up. He gave up his righteousness. You understand? He can put on our sin. That's unbelievable, know? isn't it? He yeah. He became a murderer, you know? He became everything that that that's opposite to, to who he is and to what he is. He became that to give us his righteousness. He yeah. took his crown from his head and he put it on our heads for, for yeah, all of those true. that will follow him, you know, and, but we cast those crowns at his feet because he is the most high God and, and we serve him and everyone should serve him. And that's what I would tell the world. Hey man, that's a powerful word. I'm telling you guys that, you know, um, I, I'm going to grab something here real quick. Let's see if my, uh, my headset cord is long enough for me to reach over here and see if it's here real quick. Um, you know the other binder, the the two binders that I have, the Justin Messenger series binders. The um, they weren't, yeah, the, they were right here. I, the cat was chewing on them, remember? And did they get did they get moved? Possibly because they. Hang on, just one sec, Kajani. I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking for uh, something I'd like to be able to share with the group about. I'll tell you what, I'm uh, Clay. I, I'm going to give you the set for a minute. I'm gonna, here. We go. I got it. I got it right here. Okay. I, I want to read y'all something. This is and it's uh, right along what Kajani just said. I want to. I want to read y'all something that was an epiphany, and it was after I got saved. And I want to read this to you because it is exactly. Exactly where Johnny just was. Okay, as I was writing my personal testimony, I was trying to tell people, look, I wrote the second coming of Jesus will have many signs to let true believers know that the time is rapidly approaching. Remember Matthew said that there would 
the uh, wars, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, and all these things we have seen throughout history, although we have never seen and witnessed the frequency and the magnitude of natural disasters. So these signs are less conclusive than the signs that are about to be, re about to be revealed to you. Okay. And I said, so before we begin, God has given me the spirit of revelation and the gift of special knowledge so that I can give a clear witness to many prophecies in the Bible. And before continuing, ask the Lord to fill your heart with truth. But first, make appeal to the Lord for a clear conscience. It is difficult to receive revelation when there is unconfessed sin standing in the way. Let me give you an example. The following is a letter I wrote to my wife, to brothers and sisters in Christ. Although I had already received the Holy Spirit, I needed to get right again before the Lord. I had harbored resentment in my heart. Here it is. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, this letter is as much a confession as it is a testimony. It is a letter to God. Oh, my Lord, my God, deal with my rebellious heart. Deal with me at the foot of the cross and the trail of blood and agony. <clears throat> and the blood and the agony that beckons the heart and the soul of each one that has been called to you. O oh, merciful God, please deal with my rebellious heart. My rebellious heart saw others as the reason for failure. My rebellious heart blamed others for its own unhappiness. It accused others of what itself was already guilty of. My rebellious heart lied to itself in any and every manner of justification. There it stood confidently at the end of a long, torturous walk, watching the one carrying the cross. My rebellious heart hurled insults pointed its finger and accused the heavy burdened one. And as Jesus was nailed to the cross and lifted up, my rebellious heart hurled insults and accusations and took self-righteous gratification and the illusionary justice of the condemned. And then out of perfect grace, the perfect miracle, Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus prays for forgiveness of the ones that are his enemies especially me. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. His joy came from making us whole again through forgiveness. Oh, God, the joy. Oh, my Lord, my God, your perfect child looks with compassion at those who hate him, and he offers to take their place. The joy was in the forgiveness, and the miracle of all miracles happens. Those that had condemned themselves are redeemed. The one that was sinless becomes sin. The ones that were evil become sinless. And the ones that were stained and become spotless. And the one that was spotless is stained in the blood of the sins of the rebellious. Prisoners are released from dungeons that they themselves have created. The blind are given their sight back and the author of life bows his head in submission to the will of his father. Oh, my Lord, my God, my Savior, let me... Thank you for having let me receive you. Amen. And that's that's the whole trip, guys. And that's the whole story. When you realize just what Kajani said, he took on our filth. And I had a moment when I pinned that, when I realized I was no different than the people nailing him to the cross. Amen. Amen. Yes. I was no different. I was I was them. And if you see yourself as any different than any of the ones that were spitting on him or hurling insults, then you probably need to do some soul searching because we are the filth that he saved. And he became the filth in order to clean us up. So that's where your devotion should come from. That's where mine comes from. My come, mine come from a devotion to Jesus because of what he did for me, and I'm so devoted to him because I know what he suffered, I know what he left, I know what he gave up in order to save a wretch like me. Amen. Yeah. And so yeah. I would like to just share that with you all, that that was my epiphany, and you know what? It's exactly what Kajani said. He uh, He laid aside everything to come down and take on this burden of our sin and our filth. And he was willing to do it. Now, that's a very sobering thing when you take hold of it. Now, let me ask you this. If you are not saved, how could you pass that up as, as a gift? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? How could you uh, turn your back on that? And that will be what you will be facing when the wrath comes. Because like Kajani said also, and I will guarantee this, when the Lord comes, let me, let me tell you the way he's coming. When the Lord rode in for his crucifixion to be crucified, back, uh, back in those days, if a king that had conquered a city or a new land, if that king came riding in on a donkey, that meant there would be quarter for the men, the women, and the children of that city that had been conquered. So if the new king that just conquered you came riding in on a donkey, that means that you would be spared. However... If that king came in on a white horse, mm -hmm. every man, woman, and child would be killed to yes. make room for the new regime. Let me tell you something, and please understand this. Our God is a forgiving, gracious God, willing and wanting to forgive everybody. He came riding in not on a donkey, but on a donkey's colt, which is the epitome of mercy. That is the epitome of a king showing mercy. When our king comes this next time, he's coming on a white horse. Yes. 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 So remember that. So remember the mercy mission is over. The mm -hmm. next time, it's not a mercy mission. It's destruction. That's so, right. I believe this with all my heart. I believe that Kajani was warned by the Lord. I believe that the Lord warned me absolutely 100%. I will stand behind everything that the Lord shown me. I believe our imminent destruction is very, very close. I believe it's imminently in front of us. I believe that if you do not get yourself to the throne of grace, I mean yesterday that you're in trouble. And I believe that if you don't make an effort after hearing this show, if you're not saved and you heard this show, do not go to bed this night. Do not put your head down on your pillow until you've come before the Lord and you've said, I'm willing to accept your free gift. Otherwise, it may be too late. It may be too late. Yeah. Amen. And so I would like to just leave that with y'all as a thought to understand that mercy has been offered, but if you don't take it, there comes a day, just like with Noah, there came a day where God told Noah, get in the ark and shut the door. That is why we have the parable of the ten virgins. The door was shut. And the four virgins were left behind. So I'm pleading with you now in the name of Jesus, folks. Please listen. Please take to heart Kajani's testimony. Um, I would encourage you guys to also, he's got some awesome videos. We got a little time left. I'd really like it if you'd talk maybe a little bit about um, the iPad goat thing. That was a mind blower. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got uh, like, 15 minutes, you want to talk a little bit about the significance of why you think they put that video out in the first place? Um, well, I can't really speak to it, is what were their thoughts per se, but I, I can kind of guess that uh, one of the things that they, that they do when they're working their magic is that they have to make it public. Um, they have to kind of put it out there. Um, in a way that uh, it's hidden, but can feel like they gain um, more power. Their magic symbols and, and symbolism out there, um, mm -hmm. but in, in, the, in the same time, they're, they're pulling the wool over the eyes of, 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 the, of the sheep. So, in that respect, I believe that was the reason for for putting it out there. It's, it's kind of like um. They're broadcasting what they're going to do before they do it, and then they're laughing at you because you don't understand what they just said, you know, that they're going to yeah, do Yeah, I'll tell you what. I, I've noticed uh, in a lot of the stuff I decrypt, uh, it's it's they, they, they're they laughing at us, absolutely. They, they enjoy mocking us. I mean, Isaiah, it says, those that rule my people mock them, says the Lord. Stop your mocking or your chains will get heavier. Um, you know, uh, 
uh, all that stuff that the Lord showed me, you know, I turn it upside down because Isaiah 29, you know, those who try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. And, and I, I notice in a lot of products that are for sale at the store, you know, they'll have even some like Captain Crunch. And they'll have, you know, Captain Crunch, you turn it upside down, it's a dead sheep. Uh, and it's it's so in your face. It's just yeah. it's just just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, one thing that, that really stuck out to me um, in that video, the iPad Go video, was was the fact that they put a likeness or, or what people um, have come to, I guess, believe that Jesus looks like. You know, they put that out there, and um, but they put him riding on a um, uh, what's it? On that on boat, canoe, on yeah, the boat of of Anubis, which is the, the god of death. You just, right. They had the um the all seeing eye on on his forehead. Now anybody that you know that that knows Christ, you know that that's not a true representation. So a lot of people that watch the video were kind of confused on that part. You know, you know, there was a lot of people were thinking that it was. Actually, you know, an actual depiction of Christ coming back, you know, um, not knowing that that was actually. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because uh, he had a third eye. <laughs> Didn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah, it, 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 right, right out there. The symbolism is right there, but, you know, a lot of people had no idea. So that kind of just shows me the mindset of a lot of people and how they will be fooled by the false Christ, you know. And right. What do you think about? Did you know? I don't know if you know about this, Kajani, but you know, I've had uh, I've had about four, five, six people I know actually know that have drawn pictures and given them to me of myself. You know, like uh, uh, one of my friends will say, "Hey, Jonathan, I, I drew a picture of you," and they'll give me an image they drew of me, and on the image of me, uh, you turn it upside down. There's a a sheep with its tongue sticking out. I don't know if you know that, but um, that's happened to me many times. It's it's one of my testimonies. Uh, you know, I walked into uh, I walked into Starbucks and there's this kid named Alex, and he always points his finger and he winks his eye at me. Um, I told the assistant manager, who's a friend of mine, his name's Chris. Said, "You see that guy over there, Alex?" And uh, Chris said, "Yeah." I said, uh, "I'll bet you a million dollars that." He'll offer to draw a picture of me, and when he gives me the picture of me, he'll have an image of a dead sheep with its tongue sticking out on the image of my face. Well, that's a pretty weird thing to tell somebody, right? <laughs> <laughs> a week and a half later, I walked in there, and the kid goes, hey, Johnny, I, I drew a picture of you. And I went, really? And I looked at Chris, and I go, hey, because Chris was working. I go, hey, check it out. I, and I got it right here. I, I, I did a video on it. And I and I and I took the I took the picture from the kid and sure enough it had a dead sheep on my face. Um yeah. I, I took that kid and I and uh, he came on break and I said, Hey Alex, I, I got a question for you, you know, um have you ever seen any of my videos? Have you ever seen my website or anything? He said he's talking like this and he's like, No, John, never, huh? And I go, Really? And I go, Never, nothing. I said, uh he said, Why, John? And I said, Well, you know, I am curious because I've seen this before several times, and I'm just really curious, you know, um, I wanted to ask you a question about the picture you drew me, and he goes, yeah, John, what's up? And I said, well, let me ask you, uh, why did you put a dead sheep with its tongue sticking out? And he just immediately, he went from, yeah, John, he went, do you know who you're speaking with? <laughs> right in the middle. Oh, you know, you, you ever heard this story, Kajoni? You want to do it? Oh man, do you do you know? How, oh man, he literally shamed to go to this kid in the middle of Starbucks. He works there, and he was on break. The assistant manager had to come around the the coffee bar and was standing there, and and this kid is instantaneously demonically possessed. But I'll tell you what, I'll uh, you and I will talk, Kajal, and I'll, I'll tell you a couple of stories about you know uh, what's happened. Well, here's the deal. On the hieroglyphs, Kajani, you should go watch the video, uh, the DVD I did that's called uh, A Kingdom Divided. Um, oh, yeah, I've seen that one, yes. Uh, Barack and Naughton and the Kingdom Divided, I've, I've seen that one. Yeah, Barack and Naughton is uh, uh, not with Kingdom Divided, but 
Yeah, the Kingdom Divided series. I I put a little scene from Scooby Doo. Uh, there's a there's a scene from Scooby Doo the movie where it's actually a training video, and it shows those that wink the eye. And the Bible says those that wink the eye devise perverse things. They bring evil to pass. So I've been able to knock off people that are demonically possessed by the way they point their finger and they wink their eye at you. And I mean, I'm so far batting about a thousand on this one <laughs> because I've actually got, I save all their pictures, you know, whenever anybody offers to draw a picture of me, uh, I automatically know that, you know, Satan has grabbed a hold of them and they're mocking me because they hand me a picture of myself with a right, right. on my face, which is exactly what's in the hieroglyph. Of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Wow, which is, that's amazing. It, it, it is. It's mind blowing. So uh, yeah, I think uh, I think they're getting really bold too now. I, I've noticed uh, the more uh, I'm out in public, I literally go into places and I have in one day I'll have a half a dozen people look me right in the eye and wink at me and point their finger at me. Mm-hmm. It's really bizarre. I'll probably do maybe a quick vid on on uh, like a montage video and put them all together because it's so fascinating. But Barack in the in the in the in the iPad goat one when he winks his eye, yeah, yeah and he winks his eye at the uh, you know straight at the whatever the, I guess would be the camera. He uh, he's fitting into the. Uh, the scripture, those that wink the eye, devise perverse things and bring evil to pass. Anyway, yeah. I thought, I thought uh, your breakdown of this video was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Ed, go, go ahead. What do you, what do you, what do you know about the, uh, you know, this part of your video here? We we got ten minutes left to talk about. It. You said the graduation cap is a square mortar board and it's Masonic. This is to represent the degree or level of mastery in the occult. Barack has ascended to and attained to allow him to be enlightened or evolved into a god. At that part of the the video you did, right? Yes, yes. Do you yes. think that that's the the Illuminati passing like uh, Bush? as the one that wasn't quite there and Barack's the one that is there? Yeah, I, I truly believe that. And I think that's what ties into um, in the beginning of, of that video when they're showing um, Bush sitting in front of the um, chalkboard. And right above the chalkboard, you see um, the image of, um, you see a couple images of a man. And I believe it goes from like a, you know, like from, from evolution. Like from, right, from a, yep. In, of it to the man that's standing up, and the, but the last man, his head, if you notice, is illuminated, so he has a halo around his head. Oh, so I didn't mean, notice that. Wow. Yeah, that means man has reached godhood, and um, we know that with the Illuminati, uh, or even even more so, let's take it deeper than that. Um, <laughs> uh, we know that the man of sin will claim to be God. You know? Right. Um, and he, when he receives the head wound and he lives, that's the time when he will he will be. I believe that that he'll be indwelled by Satan at that point, and that's when he will claim to be God. You know, um, interesting. And, and that's his enlightenment, and and I believe that, uh, you know, he's going to reach that point. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. It's uh, I'm I'm sitting here. I got it up on the screen. And uh, it's just, it's just so packed with meaning. It's it's mind-boggling stuff that they put in here. Um, what do you think? Uh, what do you think the whole gist of their message was on the whole vid? Just do you think the whole thing was just a way of mocking us? Um, it, in one aspect, I believe it was, it was to mock us. But then, in a different aspect, we see it at at the end. Um, you see uh, the Christian religion um, destroyed um, because you see the depiction the, the of the church falling down. Um, and then you see uh, this false Christ standing there in the boat of Anubis, um, mm-hmm. staring at the sun, you know, and um, basically paying homage to the sun god. So it, 
on top of the fact that they were mocking us, they were putting forth their religion. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah, they, sure. They, sure. They they're, they're, they're promoting their ideal, right? Exactly. And so I, I think that was the main um, gist of it is to get you to 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 follow them to worship their false Christ um, who pays homage to you know who's the sun god Horus. That's that, that's fascinating because you know what the everything that the Lord showed me Kajani um, uh, a lot of it you know being rooted in the Scripture is Isaiah nine fifteen those who try and hide their plans they turn everything upside down well. The the decryption of the Akhenaten hieroglyph literally has every single element in it that's in the Bible. It has, it has all of it. And Aken in Aten means worshippers of the sun. That's what Akhenaten is. Definitely. I, that's what it, it means. I mean, it, it, it's it's amazing. It, it's and it's all right there, you know, because we can see that this has been a plan that's that's um that's existed, you know, long, long before man could ever really come up with this. This is this is something that's supernatural in nature as well. Yeah. Um, so that's why you can go back and you can look at the hieroglyph, hieroglyphs and you see the story being depicted right there, you know. And, right. You know, it, it, it's there and you can't really deny it, you know. Yeah, oh no, it's it, once you see it, once you you know, once once you see the stuff and once once it's pointed out to most people, you know, unless they've just hardened their heart or they're entrenched in sin, it's very simple to see. But it's, what's really scary is the people that say it's not there. <laughs> those are the exactly. ones that I'm really scared for those people. Yeah. One one thing I want to touch on too, real quick, um, is this new story that just came out that uh, the shooting that happened in front of the. Um, Empire State Building in New York. Yeah, you got um, it. Uh, Kajani, I'm going to give you the last five minutes. Tear it up. Go for it. Okay. Just okay. real quick, I just want to show you how this kind of this thing kind of played out. All sure. right, if we look at the guy's, the guy's name, the guy who did the shooting, his name was uh, Jeffrey Johnson. Um, his, his name, if you look at the etymology of his name, his name means divine peace. Jeffrey means divine peace. Johnson, of course, means penis or a phallic symbol. Okay, the guy that he killed, his name was Stephen Ercolino. Stephen means crown or victory wreath for conquest. Ercolino uh, comes Ercolino comes from Hercules or Herculanus. Um and Hercules is equivalent with Baal or Bel Belzebub with Satan. Uh, um the company that they work for is Hazan. Hazan means autumn. Okay. Um Baal was the god of autumn. Um, and uh. they said Baal died in autumn, and then he was resurrected again in the spring. So the the fact that this guy was killed, um, his name is is Baalzebub, you know, his last uh. name. That's what that he's he's killed in you know at his company, um, Autumn, and he's killed in front of the Empire State Building, which is of course a phallic symbol, you know. So this this was another rich. And uh, so you oh you so yeah you believe it was another ritual killing. Yes. yes oh yes. wow. See I don't I Kajani I don't even know anything about it yet. I've I've been so entrenched in my own little world. I haven't stuck my head out of the gopher hole in a few days. So uh, I didn't I didn't really even know about that. Wow yeah, that's but, that's just unbelievable again. Yeah these things just happen all the time. So they're building up to a bigger ritual. You know, um, and September 11th is right around the corner. Is this the the uh, 11th year? Mm -hmm. You know, number 11 is very significant uh, to them. Oh, absolutely, and yeah, boy, I'll say, well, we got a whole two-hour show just on the number 11. Okay, well, listen, Kajani, would you like to lead us in a prayer? We got, you know, we got two two and a half minutes left. Would you like to lead us all in a prayer, and we'll just join in with you? Yes, yes. Definitely. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gathering today. We, I thank you for Jonathan and Clay, and I thank you for everyone that stopped by to, tonight to, to listen to this message. And I, I pray that they go out and speak to their loved ones and speak to their coworkers and speak to their enemies even about the coming of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ, when that, that destruction is, is imminent, is coming 
to America, and mm. not only to America, to this entire earth, that mm. Christ will will return soon, um, any day now. And I, I just pray Psalm 91 protection over my entire family, over the entire body of Christ. Yes. And uh, we pray that we may be accounted worthy to escape the things that are coming onto this earth, Father, and stand before the Son of Man. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I just want to jump in. I want to say, Father, thank you so much. I want to thank you for every bite of food you've given me. I want to thank you for every sip of water. I want my heart to be a heart of complete and utter gratitude for all the things that you've done and all the revelation and all the people that you brought together. Father, join us together with the spirit of Spirit of forgiveness, and Father, in the name of Jesus, any one of us that are in any root of unforgiveness, please cut it away from us now the, so we don't have to have that when you show up. I know that will be counted against us. So in the name of Jesus, I forgive everyone. I ask everyone to forgive anyone and everyone who's hurt you or done something or wronged you in any kind of way. It's time to let go and let God be in charge. Heavenly Father, I bless this group. I pray for Kadani and his family and for all the families and all the children of this world, Father. I want to pray for the people in the Middle East and for the little ones. I don't know what to ask for except, Father, you know, I just pray for their souls. Amen. Kajani, God bless you, brother. I love you, man. Thank you for being on. I really enjoyed it, brother. And uh, Oh, man, I love you guys. Everybody that came out. Um, to listen, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming to my uh, my channel and watching my views, uh, watch my videos, and uh, just thank you for everything. Praise God. All right, brother. Well, listen, all right, if it's okay, I'll drop you a line tomorrow if that's all right. Yes, please call. Me. Okay, we'll kick it around a little bit tomorrow. God bless you, brother. I love you. Thank you. All right, love you too. Okay. All right, awesome. Praise God. That's awesome. All right, folks. They are what a what a humble, nice man. Very nice guy. Be really nice. Okay, guys. I'm going to close it out with the show. We're out of time. This will be, the music will be on the archive. All right. <laughs>